so today we're talking about preventing exercise related and unintentional injuries. Uh, chapter 13 is going to be a two-part lecture. So part one today we we're going to talk about some common injuries. Um, some of these you may have experienced or may know somebody that has experienced them. So first of all, there's four main causes of exercise injury. The first one is improper training techniques. We've already talked about overtraining syndrome. Um, overtraining syndrome is a major cause of injury. You know, inappropriate recovery or period, not having that 48 hours that was recommended. Um, with overtraining syndrome, some of the symptoms or things that you might experience by having overtraining syndrome include an increased heart rate, reduced appetite, uh, weight loss, irritability, disturbed sleep, frequent injuries, and of course, that increase in illness. Second risk is inadequate shoes. So when you go to the shoe store and you are trying to buy shoes for a specific activity, it doesn't take you very long in order to find them. Um, shoe manufacturers are doing a very good job now of designing shoes for specific activities. So, you know, when you want to do golf, they have golf shoes. When you want to do running, they have running shoes. Volleyball, basketball, you know, football, they're all designed for whatever that activity is going to demand of that shoe. Uh, runners especially benefit from proper footwear. You definitely want to use uh, shoes that are specifically designed for your activities, like I've already said. Uh, third thing, alignment abnormalities in your legs and feet. So you definitely want to watch your posture. And then improper exercise techniques, you know, that excessive distance or duration, especially when you're first starting out. So that's why it's always important to follow that 10% rule. Start out easy and work your way up. Um, another improper exercise technique that you may have seen people do are uh, sudden drastic changes in your exercise routine. You know, maybe they are just starting out and they don't feel like they're pushing themselves to, you know, hard enough. So they make these drastic, you know, changes and then they end up getting hurt. So you've got intrinsic and extrinsic risk factors in exercise. Intrinsic things are the things that are going to be inside of you. And these are some things that you can control and some things that you cannot control. Extrinsic factors are going to be outside of yourself. So intrinsic factors, um, the first one is age. So as we age, you know, our body doesn't necessarily respond in the way that it used to. So some of the things that we demand of it are going to be difficult for it to um, maintain or continue to do unless we, you know, continue to do those activities on a daily basis. Um, body size and composition, you know, if you start to increase in your size or your body composition starts to increase, you're putting a lot of unnecessary uh, demand on your body. Um, your physical fitness levels, so we need to be aware of where we currently are so we're not demanding too much of ourselves. Um, bone density and structure, your gender, and your muscle flexibility and strength, those are all also intrinsic factors. Now, extrinsic factors, these are the things outside that you can control to a certain extent. Um, environmental conditions, you know, you are not in charge of whether the um, rain is coming or if it's going to snow. But you can look at the type of terrain, say if you're running, you're never really supposed to be running on hard surfaces because that puts more stress on your joints. So maybe instead of running on the cement, you can run on the grass or you can run in the dirt. Um, definitely looking at the surface of the playing conditions, um, definitely it's something that you want to consider. Um, weather, definitely want to take that into consideration. You know, if it's really cold or really hot, you may want to wait until the temperature changes so it's more um, favorable for what you're doing. Um, equipment is another thing. You know, a lot of uh, manufacturers now for sporting goods, you know, whether it be Adidas, Under Armour, or Nike, they're doing a really good job of trying to develop clothing that's going to help either keep you cool or keep you warm during the activities that you're going to be wearing that stuff in. And the same thing with footwear, they continue to make advances in that to make it better for the activities that you're um, going to be wearing it for. Uh, type of activity, whether it be competitive or leisure, you know, leisure would be like a good, nice pickup game where we're just there to have fun. 
However, those can quickly turn competitive. Maybe somebody went in and you know shot the basket and they accidentally got fouled. Well, they took it the wrong way and now it's on. Um, intense the amount of activity and then your warm up are all um, the remaining extrinsic factors. So common conditions and injuries, you know, acute muscle soreness. This is going to be the muscle soreness that you feel during or um, immediately following a workout. Um, it's definitely very, very common, especially if you're first starting out. The cause is excessive duration or intensity. Um, in order to prevent it, you want to begin and end your exercise session gradually. So make sure you're doing that warm up, make sure you're doing that cool down. Uh, delayed onset muscle soreness. This is generally occurs 24 to 48, 48 hours after exercise. This again is very common as well. Um, you know, the worst thing that people can do is when they start to have that muscle soreness to say, look, I hurt too bad. I can't do anything else. Well, you need to get up. You need to continue to moving because that's what's going to help get that muscle soreness out. Uh, the cause is usually, again, excessive duration or intensity. Uh, prevention, you definitely want to refrain from strenuous or prolonged exercise. Make sure you're following that 10% rule and building up to extensive or long periods of exercise. So back pain, like we already talked about, 80% of U.S. citizens will experience some type of back pain in their lifetime. A lot of times back pain is caused by a muscle weakness in the abdomen and lower back or also improper lifting techniques. Um, so you definitely want to maintain your good posture, especially when lifting. And another way to prevent back uh, pain is to increase your flexibility in your strength, reduce that body fat, especially in the abdominal area, and then improve on those muscle imbalances. So if you continuously work out your core muscles but don't target any of your back muscles, you're going to be creating an imbalance. All right, muscle strains. Um, if you look over here in the diagram, it shows where the muscle is slightly torn, and that's what occurs when you strain a muscle, you tear it. Uh, the cause is overstretched muscle or muscles where they are forced to straighten against a heavy load. Um, you can also be caused by poor, uh, poor flexibility or overtraining. Uh, dramatic um, our dynamic stretching will help prevent muscle strain. So make sure that they're warmed up and ready to take on whatever you're going to be asking of your body. Um, depending upon the severity of the muscle strain, it could take three to seven weeks for full recovery. All right, tendonitis. A tendon is a tough band of fibrous connective tissue that usually connects mo um, muscle to bone and is capable of withstanding tension. A ligament is going to connect light things like bone to bone or muscle to muscle, so a tendon is connecting unlike things. Um, with tendonitis, uh, cause is usually swelling of the tendon, and in order to prevent that, you want to use proper exercise techniques. Um, definitely want to avoid uh, joint overuse if all possible. Um, warm up and cool down will also help with tendonitis. Um, it also can be caused uh, by rapid increase in training, um, maybe inappropriate use of equipment or training on hard surfaces. The longer tendonitis is not treated, the higher the potential of damage to the tendon. All right, ligament sprains. I'm sure you guys have seen or even experienced a ligament sprain, whether it be in your ankle, you know, in your fingers, wherever. Uh, a ligament is a fibrous tissue that connects bones to other bones, like I said, to like things. Um, you know, with a ligament strain, or a sprain, sorry, um, the coloration that you see in the picture, what happens when you sprain a ligament is that it causes tears in that ligament to occur. And those tears bleed out, causing the discoloration to form in the area. Um, the cause of this is excessive force applied to a joint. So a lot of times, you know, you might sprain your ankle by, you know, stepping on something a lot of times in a athletics, you'll see it like if you jump and then you land on somebody else's foot. 
Um, it could possibly happen from stepping off a curb wrong, stepping down the stairs wrong, just everyday incidences. Uh, prevention, you can use a brace um, or some type of device in order to protect the area. Um, also refraining from high stress activities. Um, you know, you want to try and strengthen areas that may be weak or involved in high stress activities so it can handle the stress that you're placing on it. Um, healing, once again, depends upon the severity. Average, it's usually four to six weeks. All right, torn cartilage. Uh, cartilage is flexible, connected tissue found in many areas of your body. You have it in your nose, in your ears, um, in your ribs, in your knees. Uh, usually torn cartilage is caused by high force with unusual movements. Um, ways that you can prevent it is to limit the high stress activities um, on your joints and avoid and excuse me and avoid movements outside the normal range of motion. Um, once again, that warm up and that cool down is going to help prepare your body and cool it down in a good manner. Um, definitely want to try and condition your body before you put large amounts of stress on your body. All right, now we're getting to the fun stuff. Um, after these next few things, I will be showing videos. So if you don't like to watch people get hurt, then you can skip through the videos. Just make sure you look at the slides with the words. Um, but being an x-ray, I like to see, um, you know, how your body responds to injuries and how it recovers from injuries. One of the things that we often see are dislocations. So a dislocation is an injury to a joint. It's a place where two or more, or more of your bones come together in which the ends of your bones are forced from their normal positions. Um, dislocations do occur quite often, but the most common places are shoulders and fingers. Other sites for dislocations include the elbows, knees, and hips. So looking at these radiographs, on the left-hand side, that is a dislocation of the humerus or your shoulder. In the middle is a dislocation of your patella or your kneecap. And then on your right-hand side, that is a dislocation of an elbow. So like I said, you know, if you don't like to watch videos where people get hurt, um, kind of close your eyes. Hopefully this will work. I'm not going to play the whole video, but I will play some of it. It'll show it here better in just a little bit. You can see how his arm is forced out of its normal alignment. All right, so here they'll show it better. If you watch his left arm. All right, the next thing I want to talk to you about is fractures. And being an x-ray, one of the things that drives me crazy is when I hear people say, you know, is it broke? And it's like, well, yeah, it is broke. Okay, well, is it fractured? Well, yeah. A fracture is a break. A break is a fracture. There's just different types of fractures going on. So do not ever call your parents and say, good news, I, I you know, my arm's not uh, broke, it's fractured. It's the same thing, okay? So um, a bone fracture can be the result of high force, impact, or stress. So through the middle, you will see different types of fracture. You got the normal bone, a uh, traver, uh, traverse fracture is one where the bone continuity is broken straight across. Um, that one's pretty simple to heal. Oblique is at an angle, and that one's usually um, pretty simple to heal as well. A spiral fracture is caused from a twisting motion, and this would be an example of someone stepping in a hole and twisting. 
Um, a lot of times with spiral fractures, the bad thing is, is that when you have a spiral fracture, you ha usually have it in multiple places. So if someone were to break their leg by stepping a hole and twisting, usually we would see a fracture up by their knee and also down by their ankle. A uh, commutative fracture, this one is basically like a puzzle piece for an orthopedic surgeon that they have to go in and try and fix. An avulsion fracture, this is where part of the bone is pulled away from the rest of the bone. Um, impacted, this is where it's basically caused by a lot of force. This could be from an accident or it could be from someone jumping from a, a large height and landing. A uh, fissure fracture, that one's not very common. And then the green stick fracture. This is the one that's the most common in kids. If you go outside and you take a stick off of a tree that's really nice and healthy and you try to break it, it doesn't snap in half, but instead it kind of splinters. So that's kind of what it's like for kids' bones. They don't have that hardness that we do as we get older, so their bones kind of splinter rather than really break in half. All right, so looking down at these radiographs, the one on your right is a transverse fracture that is of the humerus. The one in the middle, that's an avulsion fracture of the knee. And then the one on your left, that is a commutative fracture of the ankle. You can see that both the tibia and the fibula are broken into multiple pieces. All right, so here's another video for you. You are going to watch this gentleman in the second lane. All right, so as you can tell, he's running along at a really good pace, and all of a sudden, it looks like he pulls his hamstring. As he's falling, if any of you noticed, half of his bone came out of his knee, or right at his knee. So we have these things called open and closed fractures. Um, open fractures are any time that the bone comes through the skin, and those require immediate surgery simply because of the risk of infection. Closed fractures are going to be the ones that um, stay within the skin and are not seen. Um, another story with this, a lot of times, you know, I'm showing you videos from athletics, but, you know, you can have different types of fractures from different things. Um, we had one girl come in, she was longboarding and got her leg caught up underneath the board and fell and had an open fracture of her ankle. Um, I've had, you know, a lady get bucked off of a horse and had an open fracture up by her knee. Um, the funniest story that I've ever had happen um, didn't involve an open fracture, it was still closed. But this guy was out hiking and he had, um, he fell. And thankfully there was people there that were able to help him uh, get back to his truck. Well, he drives himself to the hospital and he checks in at the front desk and says, you know, I think I broke my ankle. So they put it in an x-ray and I go out there and get him and um, get him back into the x-ray room. I say, you know, you have to take off your boot because we got to x-ray your ankle and I can't x-ray through that. So he said, okay. So he takes off his boot while he's sitting on the table and all of a sudden his foot flops over to the side. He looks at me and he says, um, do you think it's broke? I looked at him and I said, well, does your foot usually flop like that? So there you go. His foot was definitely broke. Um, you know, healing a fracture definitely depends upon the age of the person and the severity of the fracture. All right, so another common condition, um, especially of the lower extremity, is called patellofemoral pain syndrome, or PFPS. Um, patellofemoral pain syndrome is pain in front of the knee. It frequently occurs in teenagers, manual laborers, and athletes. Basically, the patella will slide off track, causing um, wear and pain. 
Um, I had a girl in one of my PED 100 classes several years ago have this, and she said, you know, there's not really any rhyme or reason as to why it just all of a sudden slides off. But she said, you know, as she's walking, she can feel it if it's starting to move and she stops, you know, and pushes on it. And then it'll go back into the position that it's supposed to. Um, some of the prevention, um, definitely using proper exercise techniques, uh, trying to avoid stress on the knee, definitely strengthening your quadriceps and using the proper footwear. Um, some people you can see um, during athletics to wear a knee brace or even a patella band in order to keep it in the right position. Uh, shin splints refers to pain along the inner edge of the shin bone. This is the tibia. Um, with shin splints, that does not mean, let me reiterate, does not mean that the bone is splitting into pieces. Okay, uh, any vigorous sports activity can bring on shin splints. It's very common um, for those that are first starting out in a fitness program or those that are trying to train too quickly. Um, causes from muscle tendon irritation or inflammation of the connective tissue, most often caused by overuse. Uh, ways to prevent this is run on soft surfaces. The more that your body does not have to absorb, the better off it's going to be. Um, you know, make sure that your shoes are well padded and they are good at shock absorbing. Also advance your exercise slowly. About 27% of runners will develop shin splints. Uh, full recovery can take anywhere between three to six months. So shin splints is definitely something that is an irritating injury for people. All right, stress fractures is the last type of injury that we're gonna talk about today. Uh, stress fractures are tiny cracks in a bone. And a lot of times these are not um, big enough or sensitive enough to show up on regular x-rays. A lot of times they are found through MRI. Um, cause is excessive force applied to the leg or foot or from overuse. I developed stress fractures when I was playing um, softball in college, going from rubber cleats in high school to metal cleats in, in college where they do not give you much um, padding or shock, shock absorbing. Um, so I developed those in both of my feet. Um, stress fractures, um, most common in the weight bearing bones of the lower leg and foot. Uh, prevention is avoid overtraining as much as you can. Um, make sure that your shoes are best that you can um, with the shock absorbing. Um, increase those loads gradually. And then also it can help with your flexibility in your legs and hips. Um, the more flexible you are, the less likely you will develop stress fractures. All right, so here's your questions. Remember that you need to send these in before the next class session in order to get the participation points for this lecture. All right, so question one, which of the following is not a main cause of injury? So we've got inadequate shoes, scoliosis, abnormalities um, of the alignment in your legs, and then improper training techniques. So the answer is scoliosis. That is not a main cause of injury. All right, so question number two, true or false. Intrinsic risk factors include age, current physical fitness level, and warm up. Is that true or is that false? That is false. Your age and your current physical fitness level are intrinsic, however, your warm up is extrinsic. All right, so match these up. We've got back pain, acute muscle soreness, delayed onset muscle soreness, muscle strains, tendonitis, and ligament sprains. You've got A is being sudden muscle soreness during exercise, B generally occurs 24 to 48 hours after exercise, C, overstretched muscle that causes little tearing. Swelling of a tendon is D. E is weakness in abdomen and lower back. And then F is excessive force applied to a joint that causes tearing of the ligament. So your correct order is E, A, B, 
CDF. All right, so dislocations most commonly occur in all areas except which? So two of these are very common. The other one can occur, but not commonly. So that is elbows. Which of the following is not a type of fracture? You've got green stick, avulsion, impacted, oblong, or spiral. Oblong is not a type of fracture. All right, we're going to match these up again. You've got PFPS or patellofemoral pain syndrome. You've got shin splints, and then you've got stress fracture. A is pain along inner edge of tibia. B is patella goes off track. And then C is common in bones of the lower leg and foot. So that one is BAC. And that is where we're going to stop for today. Um, for the next part of this lecture, we're going to talk about concussions. We're also going to talk about other um, ways to treat injuries and things like that. So like I said, remember, you've got to turn in your participation points. You have to email them to me. There's not a way to turn them in on Canvas. So please email me those so you still are getting participation points since we're no longer doing attendance, since all of these classes are now going to be online. As always, let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help if you need it.